Hey everybody, so in today's Dorico video I'm going to be showing you a way of really upping your productivity but in a different kind of way. Have you ever thought to yourself, man it's hard to see all the lines in my score. I can't see the flute part when I'm looking at the percussion and I keep having to scroll up and down. So the question is, why don't you have a bigger monitor? So today I'm going to be unboxing my brand new Samsung 43 inch computer monitor so that I can improve my Dorico work by having more screen real estate. Now I know for some of you Dorico users you might just skip right by this video because you think I don't really need an, a bigger thing on my desk, I don't want a second monitor, I don't need any more equipment, but I'm here to tell you there are some really big benefits for using a larger screen when doing notation work on your computer. Much like trying to do a full score on a piece of marching band folio, it's really hard to fit everything in and see it all at once. And that's why a lot of orchestral scores and large concert band works are printed on 11 by 17 so the conductor can actually read the notes in everybody's parts and not just see that they exist. If you're doing work on, say, a 13-inch MacBook Air, the amount of screen real estate you have in Dorico for being able to actually view your notes is pretty small. And so once I had figured out that a larger screen will really give me the ability to see and interact with more of my music at a time, I never turned back. Now I've done notation on 27 inch iMacs, on Dell monitors, on ultra wide monitors, even on these larger LCD TVs. And let me tell you, my productivity has gone way up ever since I got to a larger screen, which gave me the ability to see more staves at once and interact with more of my music. Now, it wouldn't be a fun technology video if I didn't go ahead and do an unboxing. So I'm gonna pull out my trusty box opener here, and we're gonna go ahead and pull out this TV. The TV I purchased was a Samsung Odyssey Neo G7 43 inch. Now this is a 4K monitor that also acts as a smart TV. It has built in apps for watching movies, things like Netflix, as well as playing video games. Uh, for example, the GeForce Now from Nvidia. I purchased this TV because it boasts the 144 hertz refresh rate, which mirrors better my MacBook Pro's display, which has 120 hertz. Now, my previous screen, which was a Sony Abravia 3, only had 60 hertz, which, frankly speaking, works just fine, and I'll show you more about that in a minute. But I really wanted to make it so that when I went from working on just the laptop screen back to my desk, things looked a little bit more uniform. The Samsung also has more color depth and is easier to calibrate than the Sony, so it's going to give me a stronger image when I'm doing video work like this Dorico video. So let's take a look between the MacBook's built-in screen, a standalone kind of st standard size monitor, and this full-size LCD TV. Now we can see on the regular view of the MacBook Pro, we are only getting nine staves. So we went from being able to see literally every single stave in the score to only seeing half, which is quite a reduction in our viewable space. Now it is true that I could zoom out, but you can see that if I even go down to 150%, the notes become so impossibly small that I really can't read them. Now if we go to the native 5K resolution of the MacBook, which makes the text pretty darn small, we still are not quite large enough to see the whole page, and certainly not at a readable size. To get up to the readable size, we'd have to go to at least 200% here, which still only gives me 10 staves of viewable space, which again is not the whole page, which means I will have to scroll up and down to see the top part and the bottom part at the same time. And so from this standpoint, you can see that the amount of scrolling I have to do up and down to do a regular score is quite extreme on such a small viewing angle. Now do remember, this is a 16-inch MacBook Pro, so if you have a 13-inch MacBook Air, the problem is even worse. And my friends who have the 13-inch models, they are going to see somewhere in the neighborhood of seven staves, possibly even as few as five, for what they can actually read when they're working on their music. So if you're doing an orchestral score, that's almost intolerable how much you have to scroll up and down. Now this next display I'd like to show you is an LG 34-inch ultra-wide monitor. Now this monitor has two distinct 
differences between that and a regular screen. One is it's not the 16 by 9 aspect ratio, it's the 21 by 9. So you're actually getting a lot more width than a standard monitor, but in reality we're only getting slightly more height than the height of our MacBook Pro's screen. Now this monitor is a 5K plus, meaning it's actually um, a 5K image plus some to the right because it is the ultra wide. So it's a great monitor for doing desk work, spreadsheets and all that. Now the LG has great color reproduction, but it's just a standard monitor. So there's no extra bells and whistles like faster refresh rates and things like that. We can see on the 200% zoom in Dorico, I am able to see the first 15 staves easily in the score. However, I'm not going to get too much more than that. This is the native resolution of the screen, and because the screen is just a fair amount larger than the laptop screen, I think the text is fairly readable, but you can see it is pretty small, and you are going to be sitting back away from it because of the size of my desk. Now this is a great improvement, and for those of you who are struggling to get enough room on your desk, this means a 27 or a 32 inch standard monitor, which are very common and quite inexpensive, is going to give you much, much more real estate than that laptop screen, because now I can see at least 15 of the staves at once before I have to start scrolling. When I go down to 150%, I can see the entire 8.5 by 11 page, and I can see all the staves, but unfortunately they're just too small for me to really be able to read the notes, and so I would have to zoom in if I was doing any work on a state, but it does give me the ability to be able to view the whole score, whereas on the laptop screen there's just no way to see all the parts at once with any kind of clarity. Now the next screen we have is the Samsung. This is a 43 inch purpose-built computer monitor and it's also a gaming monitor. So one of the biggest features they included was the 144 hertz refresh rate to give the video a little bit more pop and sizzle, especially when you're playing multimedia things in video. The other thing they put on this one, which I'm really happy about, is a non-glare coating. And so it actually reduces a lot of the reflection. You can see in the video, with the screen off, I can't see any reflections here in the room, which is actually really nice, because that means when the screen is on, I will see no ghost in images whatsoever. Now, from my perspective here in the room, it's actually even deeper and even less colored than you're seeing in the video there, but the video colorizes things ever so slightly. So let's go ahead and fire this thing up and see how it works. Okay, so here on the Samsung, you can see at 197%, we can see the entirety of the 8.5 by 11 page from top to bottom, which includes all of the score. Now, it's a little hard to see in the scale of this YouTube video, but sitting at normal, about arm's length away from the TV, I can see all of these notes at this scale level. Now once in a while I will zoom in so that I can get a little bit better uh, viewing and I have a little more fine control, but I can read all of the notes from the top stave to the bottom stave. Now one thing to note, especially in Mac, when you're working with a monitor, is the idea of content scaling. So what this means is, on a Mac, when we do content scaling, instead of viewing it at a one-to-one -one pixel ratio, the computer actually zooms in on the image and then uses multiple pictures to create that image, meaning you're going to get a higher pixel density, which leads to better resolution of what you're looking at. By default, even on your MacBook Pro, you're actually not seeing the native resolution. You're actually seeing a reduction, and it's generally going to be somewhere between half the size and a third of the size. Now another benefit of this extra large monitor is that we can go fairly small toward that native resolution and we can still read the text, see all the things we need to see without having to squint or move closer to the monitor, which means the effective number of pixels that we can make use of is quite a bit bigger. You can see, if I switch this to the native resolution, how much smaller the window of Dorico is. So here at the native resolution, you can see I gained back almost a third of my screen real estate. 
Now, sometimes when I'm working with an extra big score, like a concert band score, or with a orchestral score, I'll actually go into this mode because now if I was to make Dorico full size, I can zoom much farther in and still see the entire page. So at the native resolution, I'm now at 256% zoom, and I can still read every single note, which means I can see two full pages of score, both top to bottom and left to right, which gives me a huge advantage, again, in viewing the entirety of the music all at once. Now, there's a trade-off here, right? The text size has gotten a lot smaller, so reading menu items and things gets a little bit difficult. However, sometimes it's worth it so that you can get all of this screen real estate. If we flip back over to my preferred zoom method, I'll show you what 200% looks like. Now you can see in the display setting of Mac, they give you five different options from native, which is going to be the most screen real estate, but the smallest text size, all the way up to the larger text option. Now the larger text option is cartoonishly big and almost unusable. And on a larger screen, I even find the default size to be zoomed way too far in to be usable. Let's take a look at that. So you can see here in default, I can still almost read the entire page because of the size of the monitor, but look how large the icons are and how big the text is around the screen. Like I said, it looks a little bit like my first computer. This is definitely zoomed in just a little bit too much. So back at my preferred zoom range, which the Mac lists at 1692 pixels tall, um, I think I have a really good view of the score. I can read all of the notes. I can still read the text from partway across the room and certainly from my sitting position at the desk. This also means that when I'm doing part formatting, I can see so much of the part to help me look for errors, for notes that are bumping into each other, and this is a really great time saver. It is really hard to do part formatting if you can't see the entire page at once, and so this is such a blessing when you're trying to make sure your parts are publisher ready so that you can hand them out to musicians without fear of people raising their hand and say, hey, wait a minute, what is that? Why is there two sharps and all that other stuff? Because now I can see how many bars are per line. I can scan across the entire page easier. And you can see, even at my preferred zoom range, I can see two full pages of this part without any trouble whatsoever. And I'm halfway across the room. In short, the biggest gains in having a larger monitor when it comes to Dorico usage is the ability to work with a larger amount of real estate on the screen. You can see more, you can do more, and it makes it so much easier to visualize your music. For those of us who are conductors, you know how hard it is to conduct on a condensed score. So why would we want to write our music having to scroll up and down constantly to see the top and the bottom part? It's frustrating and it really slows down your creativity as well as your productivity. So hopefully you found this video useful. If you have any more questions specifically about monitors, the differences between different LCD panels, OLED, IPS, VA and whatnot, I'm happy to give you a little bit of an insight into that. This panel here is a VA panel, which means it has a higher refresh rate and is able to do deeper colors, but it does mean the viewing angles aren't quite as good as they would be in an IPS panel, which is typically what you're going to find in a dedicated computer monitor. The IPS panels have really, really good viewing angles, and typically the entire screen is almost entirely uniform from any seating place. But you're going to miss out on some of those faster refresh rates unless you spend a little bit of extra money. Now, monitor technology changes constantly, and it keeps evolving. So by the time you watch this, there may be the newest and greatest out there that supplants all of these things. But at least for today, I'm pretty darn happy with my 43-inch monitor here on my desk. Now, to be clear, I don't know that I could get a monitor any bigger than this and still have, be able to work on it. This is about as large as I can get and still be a practical distance away from my desk. 
Because one thing you probably have noticed, if you ever plug your TV into your computer and try and run it from your couch, the text is so impossibly small that you have to zoom way in, so you kind of lost the benefit of having that giant screen anyway. So there's really a diminishing return. There aren't many manufacturers making monitors quite this big. 32 seems to be the sweet spot for a 16 by 9 standard monitor size. If you want to go with an extra wide version, like a gaming monitor, they work great, but don't be fooled when it says it's a 47-inch monitor, because it's really only the height of a 27-inch monitor, and it's just doubly wide. And interestingly enough, since most of what we do in computer has to do with how much we can see from top to bottom, not left to right, it's really important to look at that measurement first when we're deciding how big a monitor we really would like to get. LG, Asus, MSI, and others make really fantastic panels, as well as this Samsung here. Again, I really fell in love with this gigantic screen real estate, and I have a desk big enough to support it, which is actually a standing desk as well. And you can see, if I crank up my standing desk, I have no problems with raising it up and down, so if I want to work in a standing position, it's not a problem. Again, thanks so very much for watching, and watch for more of my Dorico videos. I'm going to be doing a new version of my part formatting and page formatting for the score, and how to import and export. With the new Dorico 6, I feel like I need to do a quick update on these. I've been helping a lot of people in my private lessons with these very things. Remember, if you want to go to my website, larsonjazz.com, you can check out some of my various videos, as well as you can get personalized help on Dorico and anything else. So again, thanks so much for watching. If you're enjoying the videos, please like and subscribe, and I'll catch you next time.